I feel like I'm in Hawaii. Welcome to the SHOT Show. I'm pleased to be joined today um, with a bunch of folks to talk about uh, national reciprocity, the concealed carry bill. I'm joined with Diane Muller, who's a professional shooter, and Steve Gutkowski from the Washington Free Beacon, and AWR Hawkins from Breitbart News, and I'm Lawrence Keene from the National Shooting Sports Foundation. So as I mentioned, we were going to talk about the concealed carry bill that I'm sure everybody is familiar with. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about the prospects for the bill, what the bill does, and why it's important uh, for gun owners all across the United States. So we're going to open it up to the panel and talk a little bit about their own perception or uh, why the bill is important to them. We'll start with you, Diane. Well, um, I'm a professional shooter now, but I was a police officer. And when I retired in 2014, I remember going to the courthouse and I saw the sign for the first time from a different perspective, from kind of a civilian. And there's a bill that allows retired officers to carry, but I, it made me start thinking about it from a completely different perspective. And I was like, what do normal people do when they go into a courthouse and they can't defend themselves? Uh, places that, that things happen often. So, uh, and then you hear about, I, I don't like to go, even with the 218 bill that protects me as a retired police officer, I don't like to go into New York DC, when I come to DC, I'm very, very intimidated yeah. to carry because of their archaic gun laws. So, AWR, why don't you, for the audience, just explain a little bit about what the bill does and why it's important? Right, thank you, Larry. The bill, the bill basically treats a concealed carry license like a driver's license. So that if I have a concealed carry license in Kentucky and I want to travel to Oklahoma, it's going to be valid, just like my driver's license. Or if I, have a, if I have a concealed carry license in Indiana and I want to go to California, of all places, I can carry in California. That Right now, they have a situation where California only recognizes licenses from their own state. And uh, I always say, imagine, imagine if your driver's license was only valid in your home state or in the, or in the states that immediately border your home state but nowhere else. And a driver's license doesn't deal with a natural right. It deals with driving. So we're talking about something far more important. So I think what it does is it gives the Second Amendment not so much a boost as it gives the Second Amendment protection while it protects us. Yeah, it's important. I mean, the Second Amendment is a fundamental right, as the Supreme Court has said. And your constitutional rights don't stop at your state border. Right. And as you know, we have this crazy patchwork of mm -hmm. uh, reciprocity where one state will recognize another state. But I mean, you know, you, you need a chart and an abacus to keep track of where you can go, where you can't go, and it's very intimidating. So a lot of people just say, I'm not going to take the risk, because, you know, you, you have the example of the woman in, from Pennsylvania, your, your home state, Steve, who you know, missed an exit, found herself going from Pennsylvania to New Jersey. She was licensed in Pennsylvania, but not in New Jersey. She gets pulled over by the police for a traffic violation. She does as she's trained and tells the police officer she's carrying a firearm, which is for the protection of a law enforcement officer. And what happened to her? She gets arrested. Shanine Allen, that's right. She, uh, and she'd probably still be in jail today if it wasn't for the intervention of uh, Governor Chris Christie at the time. And all for carrying uh, in New Jersey. She didn't commit any sort of gun crime or she didn't try to rob anybody. She just had a gun on her. Yeah, uh, and a gun that she legally owned and was legally registered to, uh, permitted to carry in Pennsylvania, yeah. but not in New Jersey. And th that's exactly what the bill deals with. Right, right. right. So the bill is uh, Congressman Hudson, who wasn't able to join us today because of uh, the, the government shutdown, so he had to stay for votes in the House, uh, would have joined us, would have liked to have been here. But he has a bill, H.R. 38, that has now passed the House of Representatives Good. by an overwhelming uh, margin. Um, that is the National Reciprocity Bill. So that bill now moves over to the Senate, uh, where the Senate will take up that legislation. And there's a bill introduced by Senator Cornyn from Texas that's similar, they're not identical. Um, you want to talk a little bit, uh, AWR, about the Senator Cornyn's bill? Well, Senator Cornyn's bill, um, I like, to me, it, it, it's, in its essential points, it's similar enough that it's gonna do what we're talking about. It's gonna make the concealed carry permit a driver's license. And I can't get off that because it makes so much sense. I can't understand why we can't rally behind it. When I say we, I mean why 
why there isn't more support in the Senate, broadly speaking, for this bill. Because this is not an expansion of rights, it's a protection of rights. Right. It's a restoration of rights. Right. And, and Cornyn's bill, to me, does all the, does all the essential things that, uh, that Hudson's bill does. I know Hudson was happy with it. And I, I wish that uh, we could get Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and others to rally behind it. Well, I think there is one important difference between the House bill and the Senate bill, uh, which deals with uh, non-resident permits, because the House bill, Hudson's bill, uh, would allow anyone with a permit from any state to carry in any other state, right? right? right. Whereas the Senate bill doesn't have that provision. This right. So one of the problems we face is that some states simply won't issue concealed carry licenses right. to their residents, right? Right. Uh, you know, think of Maryland or New York or New Jersey or right. California. Uh, and so, if we were to have the Senate bill pass, you would still have some people. Yeah, sort but of I think left don't you think in, in committee but and in debate that's going to be changed? It could, it could certainly change, but it's also a, a big sticking point, I think, for a lot of yeah. anti-gun well, Democrats. So, Dan, what are some of the arguments the opposition make about why we shouldn't have national reciprocity? I mean, we hear about well, there, anybody coming into my state, they represent a threat to my to my community coming from some other state. Well, I think it goes back to their misconception that uh, any kind of concealed carry is going to make it the, the out the old west, and we're going to have shootouts and somebody's going to take their gun or all the things that you hear them say. I think it goes along the same line that it's just it's not based in facts or evidence of their fears. So right. we just you know it's getting the information out there and the messaging correctly, and, and I think we can carry this through. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, if you go from state A to state B, just like a driver's license, you, you don't have to get a driver's license from state B, but when you're driving in that state, you have to obey the traffic laws. It says no right on red, you can't make a right on red even if you could in your own state. So you still have to obey the local law in that state, so if it says you can't bring it into, you know, a courthouse or something like that, then you have to obey that law. So all the, the, the state you're carrying in, you have to obey their law, just like you do with, with a driver's license. You know, and some of the arguments we hear being made about why, you know, sort of the blood in the streets argument, were, weren't they arguments that we heard made in opposition to concealed carry laws being passed in the states in the last 20 years? Yeah, I mean, that, it's sort of the argument that, it's the default argument, I think, for a lot of uh, people who are against any sort of uh, gun carry or even gun ownership. The, the argument is always that there's going to be more violence, blood in the streets, wild west. I mean, it's just something you hear repeated right. continually over, yeah. over any program legislation, yeah. honestly. So what's, the, from the, having been a member of law enforcement, what's law enforcement's perspective on this? I mean, we hear from big city chiefs that are opposed, they're you know, very much in favor of gun control and opposed to, it really seems, the Second Amendment and the exercise by civilians. But what, what do rank and file law enforcement, regular cop on the street, think about it? Well, I haven't taken a poll, so I can only speak from my own experience, but I've never had a problem with, it's really kind of easy to identify law-abiding people with guns versus uh, criminals with guns. It's, you know, it's the look in their face. They give you cues. Uh, it, if I say I'm a concealed carry person, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. And I, yeah. and I as a police officer, uh, I know exactly how long it takes for you to get from 911 to my car, from my car to get to your house, and I would much rather you be able to take care of yourself yeah. before like, I get it's there. It's like the old saying, you know, in an emergency, you know, Cops. the police are only minutes away. Right? When seconds count. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so we'll have to see what happens with uh, Senator Cornyn's bill and Senator Hudson's bill, how, how they move through the process. I think it's very important, uh, you would all agree, that everybody should be calling their senators and urging them to support this legislation. Frankly, either version would be, I think, a marked improvement from the current patchwork that we have now. But it's important that we, we move the process forward in the legislature. So everybody out there, you should pick up the phone tomorrow and call your senators and urge them to support the legislation if they're not already co-sponsors. Uh, and, and if they're not co-sponsors, you got to get on the bill. And if they are a co-sponsor, it's important to thank them as well. So thanks for joining us. I hope you found this uh, an informative discussion. I know I certainly did. It's great to visit with my friends. So enjoy the SHOT Show. We'll, we'll see you soon.